to do a video that I get a lot of questions about uh, and hopefully I can answer this for you uh, here's the the situation if, if you've watched my old videos you know that I uh, definitely recommend a concrete mix for statuary that is a classic mix of Portland cement gravel sand with water that uh, for our family over the decades has been the best mix we've ever found it's easy to control the consistency uh, we get good results from uh, the stuff uh, for strength, of course, it's the strongest uh, mix you can get for concrete. It cures nice so that you don't get much shrinkage. Overall, we like it. However, there is one big drawback, and that is it is heavy. You know, yes, it's strong, it's solid, it's going to last for decades, but it is heavy. And there are some people out there that would like it if the statuary could be a little bit lighter. So, yes, there are ways you can make statuary lighter, and I'm not talking about hollowing it out. Uh, things like that. I'm talking about actually using different materials and still get a fairly good quality statue out of the result. I'm going to talk about two products today and they are vermiculite and perlite. And I've actually got some perlite here. And if you're wondering what these are, well, you can find these at most garden shops, any place they have plants and potting soils and that. These are used uh, in potting soil for certain kind of plants. I don't know exactly what. That's not my area of expertise. But both vermiculite and perlite can be used uh, in place of gravel and some of the sand in your cement mixes. Now, the perlite I like because it's so light. Now, to look at it, it actually looks almost like powdery styrofoam. There is just virtually no weight to it whatsoever. Yet, when you put it in a concrete mix and do it right, uh, it will still provide a strong enough uh, concrete that your statues will last a long time. Now, I will say this. When perlite, vermiculite are used in concrete mixes, it's usually used for uh, insulating type concrete. So in construction, when they're putting up certain walls that they want uh, in insulation within the concrete or barrier walls for sound in neighborhoods, they will use these because they provide great insulation. Uh, these materials do not absorb water the way sand and gravel would in concrete. So it not only makes it lighter, but it is good uh, for those reasons as well. However, for statuary, I honestly wouldn't recommend these mixes for anything that's uh, very large. For instance, large water fountains, uh, tables and benches, I wouldn't. Uh, you just don't want to take the risk because it is not quite as strong as traditional concrete. But for your standard statuary, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, like I said, you can find these products at pretty much any garden store. They're affordable, which is nice. Not as cheap as using gravel, however. Like this bag here, I think was between five or six dollars. Sounds cheap, except that you got to use a lot of this in each mix. So uh, for the amount of gravel you're replacing, the gravel ends up being a lot cheaper. So that is something you have to keep in mind. But if you're on a smaller scale, wanting to make just a few statues, uh, this shouldn't make much of a difference. Now, I'm not going to show you the actual mix because there's actually several versions of the mix. I'm going to tell you the mix that I've worked with that I've had good results with. Uh, and I, like I said, I use perlite. Vermiculite is a little smaller, grainier type stuff. The perlite is lighter and the fact that because it's a lighter color, it's easy to tell uh, that you've got a good amount of cement in there because uh, you don't want any of the color of your aggregate to show through the cement. So the mix I use is one part Portland cement, one part sand to two parts perlite. Now here's the trick with it. There's a couple things you gotta remember. Perlite, because it is so light, will tend to float in your mix if you use too much water. Now, when I use my gravel and sand mix, like I've shown in other videos, I like to make the mix fairly loose, nice and creamy without being watery. With this, it has to be just a tad thicker or else you're gonna see that material float to the top. Uh, it doesn't have to be thick to where it's a, you know, like mortar consistency, but a little thicker uh, than average. And here's the second thing you need to remember when using uh, perlite or vermiculite. These do not uh, hold water the way normal statuary does. They will dry too fast if you take it out of the mold and just leave it out in open air. They dry so fast that it's going to possibly cause surface cracks on the concrete, uh, weakening it, basically making garbage. The trick is once you take those items out of the mold and it cures about the same time for demolding as regular statues, so you know 24 hours you're generally okay taking it out, but you want to keep those statues wet for a couple days. If they're small, get you a vat that you can just submerge them in water. If they're larger, have them out somewhere where you can take a hose and spray them down three, four times a day. Don't put them in direct sun. You want to slow that curing process down for a good week or so, probably. 
It can vary. I've seen people that are like one or two days is fine. I know people that for 30 days, they keep them submerged in water. It's really up to you, but I've done it for a few days, had great success. The end result, you're gonna get a statue that looks pretty much the same as if you use the classic mix with sand and gravel, but it's gonna be anywhere between 30 and 40% lighter. You can use more of the uh, material than I told you. I've seen some people that use uh, can almost double the amount I use, but, and I've also seen mixes where people don't use sand at all. I do recommend using at least a little bit of sand. You want that extra strength. It helps spread out the mix a little bit, but that's really the secret. It's very simple. You can use those materials in place of gravel, uh, and this is great if you're making stuff to sell online and the shipping costs are killing you because of the weight. Here's how you can cut those, those weights down uh, considerably. So hope this information helps. Uh, pretty soon we're going to get started on our uh, how-to videos with all sorts of painting. Uh, that seems to be the number one thing people request. So until then, make sure to uh, check out my website. The info is underneath this video as well as our contact info. And we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.